do you know what tonight is? It's New Year's Eve. Do you know what that means? Yeah, we get to have a party late in the dark time. That's right. We get to have a party when it gets dark out because at the stroke of midnight, it turns from 2020 to 2021. What? A brand new year. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Paul, do you want a little hat? No. Okay. Well, you put a little hat on. I guess, I guess I'm the only one wearing little hats tonight. Hello. <laughs> you look like the guy from In Living Color. <laughs> <laughs> What's that movie? Two snaps and around the world. Sparkling cider for the kids. Make sure we don't mix those up. All right. <laughs> Whoa! Yay! This one's for you guys. Wow. And then this one's for Daddy and Papa. Happy New Year's! You like it? Yeah, it's like apple juice but bubbly. And mine tastes just like that too. Alright, <laughs> Stoney, you wanna taste some of this wasabi? <laughs> Did you like it? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. You partied so much! Yeah! Yeah! So this weekend is our sixth wedding anniversary and I'm gonna surprise Dustin with a night away. So I took the kids over to the grandparents and I just packed up um, 16 bags and a million different shirts because I'm not very good at picking out outfits and I wanna surprise him and just whisk him away. And so, um, yeah, I hope he likes it. Babies, Bert, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you telling me? <laughs> Where are the kids? They are at Nana and Grandpa's house okay. because I wanted to surprise you for our wedding anniversary. And I'm, I have booked a hotel room hey. and dinner out. Dude, that's and so awesome. they're gone. And I tried to pack up all the things in the house. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> so that you didn't have to do that. So hopefully I found good things. Thank you. That's <laughs> awkward. I feel weird that you're filming me with a surprise. Thank you. That's so sweet of you. Um, so wait, so we can just... We're leaving right now. What? Yeah. Wait, you know, Put your coat back on. I'm not good at this. You Put know, your... I'm the one that packs our bags. So <laughs> this is freaking me out here. <laughs> Man, that's so sweet. Let's go. All right, let's do it. Here's your key. Is this the only room up here? Yeah. It's the whole top floor. What? Are you kidding me? Dude, this place is huge. <laughs> yeah. oh God, are we moving in here? Yeah, sure, why not? Check outside. Yeah, it's like balconies that go all the way around this place. What? Hot tub. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I didn't bring a bathing suit though. Well, check out the view. What do we got in here? <laughs> <laughs> I was as limp as I was. <laughs> yeah. So the hotel that Burton surprised me with is called 21C. It's actually a kind of a contemporary art museum meets hotel. Pretty sweet. Yeah, it's very cool. They have these all over the country and they have their own art collection that kind of rotates from hotel to hotel and they also bring other artists in 
So we are gonna go walk around the museum to see all the art. Uh, but I'll put this back <laughs> on. Look at those candy necklaces. <laughs> So we're on our way to dinner now. Yes, and I'm super hungry, so that's perfect. I know, and it's chilly out here. But yeah. that margarita warmed me up. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Let's get some more. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Anniversary dinner. <laughs> okay, we're doing good. <laughs> We've gotten a couple blocks, and I need to take a minute. To not be wet. <laughs> Ready? Go! Okay. Is it ready yet? All of us. It's like a witch's brew. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, so we finally made it into the tub, which is outside on the balcony of our room. And it's rainy. It's very foggy. And it's cold. Hardly see us. Yeah. <laughs> but it feels great. Yeah, it feels good in here. Yeah. How'd you sleep last night? Good. How about you? Good. Very rested, and it was nice to sleep in without kids waking us up at 7 a.m. I know. Um, <laughs> have brunch. I will. So a lot of you guys have asked how we met, and so we wanted to share that with you guys. Grinder. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I lived in Miami before moving to Raleigh, and I knew one person that lived in Raleigh, and so I reached out to them and they invited me to a party, and it happened to be at Burton's condo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there were a lot of people there, so I didn't really get to know Burton at that party, but I remember seeing him and thinking he was super cute. Aww. Months later, I saw Burton at a bar, and I was just like, he's so hot and I kept trying to get his attention. And I kept being the creeper that kept walking <laughs> by. Like, he was with a group of friends and he was talking with them and having a lot of fun and literally was paying me zero mind. <laughs> I was, I saw you. No, you didn't. I saw you creeping. There was no way. Because I, I, I tried my hardest to get your attention to the point that the people that I was with, who I didn't mention you to these people at all, they called me out. They're like, that's Burton Buffalo. <laughs> and you're gonna need to work harder than that. <laughs> you did not. <laughs> May have not noticed Dustin the first time when he was being Mr. Creeper. <laughs> but I definitely always noticed Dustin. I mean, he was always around. How can you know? He's six foot four, five. He's huge, and so he, he he towers over everybody there. But that's not only. I mean, he's always been a really sweetheart, and I think uh, you know we've always run in the same circles, and so I've always been good friends with Dustin, and we've had a lot of a lot of fun over the years. But I was in a long-term relationship. It, it wasn't until I was out of that long-term relationship that I really took a chance, and I walked up to him. We were we were both out, and I said, "Hey, Dustin, <laughs> I'm single, ready to meet." You said, "Hey, I'm single." 
You should call me sometime. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, and, th and then I had to validate that he had my right, my correct phone number. In sure. yeah, so I was, like, I was like, let's see what you got there <laughs> to make sure you're not going to ghost me. <laughs> that actually complicated things in my life because I had made the decision that I was leaving Raleigh and I was selling my business and moving to New York because I was struggling meeting people where I lived and I was just getting really frustrated and I thought maybe if I move to a bigger city with a bigger pool maybe i'll finally meet somebody and my mind was made up and then sure enough here comes burton buffalo here comes this garner boy <laughs> i said saddle up <laughs> so a lot of people want to know uh, how do you know when you meet d1 yeah. so how do you know how did you know how did I, well i know okay i, I want to hear it okay it's so <laughs> I've always known that I wanted to be a father and uh, especially, you know, going into a new relationship. That was one of the criteria is is, is finding somebody who wanted to be a, a, a father along with me, a true partner. And as I got to know Dustin more, um, I got to meet all of his childhood friends and one of his best friends has a, has a, has a young son. And uh, we would always uh, visit them on holidays and special occasions. And I really got to see how Dustin interacted with with uh, with her son, it really clicked. It showed me that how you know he's he's this amazing, caring, beautiful uncle, uncle to this young boy, and just seeing his interactions with him and the care and love that he would show him, I could see him being the father of my kids, our kids, and that really that's really it really clicked. I mean, just you know, sitting in the corner, watching out, watching over him, and how he cared for this boy was was truly amazing, and that's how I knew. Aww. Me, how I knew that Burton was the one. I had found myself in relationships where there was always some kind of drama, insecurity that really manifested itself in our relationships and it was so detrimental to my past relationships. When I met Burton, I had never met someone who was so confident and sure of himself. And that was really refreshing to me because Burton is not a jealous person. I could see that Burton loved me for me and wasn't trying to change me or trap me or, you know, he wanted me to just be me. And that was really amazing and really refreshing. I think that having someone who is just so healthy minded when it comes to every aspect of our relationship, I knew that this was the type of person I wanted to be with. And beyond that, his heart, like his heart is really what did it for me. I think it's easy for gay guys, or maybe just people in general, I don't know, to focus only on the outside, where you're like, I'm attracted to this person, and so that's number one. And then you just focus in, that's, I'm attracted, I'm attracted, I'm attracted. But the thing is, you have to have so many other boxes checked in a relationship for it to work. Yes, you need to be physically attracted to someone, but do you guys have the same life goals? You know, do your hearts speak the same truth to each other? Are you um, compatible in every other way? And that's why I think this relationship worked is because he was my friend. I knew him and I knew his heart and I knew we got along. So, you know, being able to have it all, have, have that friendship and that closeness and that intimacy all in one, it just, makes it work. Yeah. yeah, I think you said it right. It's about creating that safe space for you to be you and for me to be me. And, and accept that. And accept and accept that. And, yeah, and, lo and love that through, through, through whatever challenges that may bring. Yeah. So who asked who to, to marry who? It was actually me. I yeah. asked Burton to marry me. Yeah. Why did you ask me? Duh. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew that he was the one and I needed to pop the question to make sure that I land this thing. Lock it in. Put Lock a ring on it. <laughs> <laughs> I booked us a trip to Asheville, North Carolina, and I had this whole day planned of horseback riding, going to the Biltmore State. And the Biltmore State is this amazing, uh, it was once the m largest private home in the United States. I'm guessing that's still the thing. I, yeah. I don't know. Exactly. But it's so beautiful. It's up in the mountains of North Carolina. Yeah. And I kept thinking while we're on these horses, I would, you know, have this moment where I looked at him and I said, you know, shirtless. Shirtless. <laughs> 
what on a white horse. <laughs> All of a sudden, my hair grows really long. And he's like, like Fabio. Fabio, yeah. And it's like blowing in the wind. I, like, that would Will you marry me? I think so. That'd be amazing. <laughs> you like. Y'all, you know, call his chest hair. But instead, we were like with a big group of people and we had these like really awkward helmets on that made us look crazy. Like, yeah. Like. And <laughs> it was very unsexy. You walked around the Biltmore State and I kept thinking, you know, I'm gonna walk to a garden and pop the question. And it just never happened. Like there were just tons of people everywhere. I just couldn't find the right moment. And I started having a panic attack because I really wanted to like pop the question. It wasn't until we went to dinner that night, and I could, he could tell that I was acting peculiar. Yeah, from my point of view, we were breaking up. Because he the whole time he's acting weird all day, he's not talking at all. I'm like, what's going on? Do you not like horses? Are you scared of these horses? <laughs> you know, I couldn't figure it out. I was, I was like, this is it. I mean, he's, we're, he's unhappy. All day long, we're on this ma amazing vacation, and he's, he's just like acting weird and squirmy. And well, so, it's because I had written this love letter to Burton, and I just wanted to find that perfect time to give it to him. And so at that point when he asked me what is wrong, I basically had to say, look, I've been carrying this letter around all day and I've been trying to find the perfect place to give this to you. And in the letter, it was just a love letter. It did not say, will you marry me? I wanted him to read all the things that I loved about him and that I admired about him. And at the end of him reading this, that's when I looked at him and said, you know, will you marry me? As soon as he popped the question to me, you know, we were kind of tucked in the corner of this, this restaurant area. Um, you know, I immediately started bawling and we had to leave. We were yeah. like, pay the bill quickly. <laughs> I was crying, he was crying, we were outside. <laughs> and we found the, the closest little bench yeah. um, to go to sit on and, and basically talk, cry. Just talk and cry and, talk and like, and it was. Um, of course, the answer was yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm here with him, but it was um, it was really special. Even last time we were in Asheville, we took the kids by the bench and said, "This is where we proposed." Yeah, and, and I said yes, and our kids were like, "What does that mean?" You know. <laughs> I said yes because the next day I had already set up an appointment with a jeweler because I wanted to have this artist design our wedding ring. So we went in and we together designed these wedding rings, which is yep. really cool. Mine can't come uh, off. I think I have I mean, way too much salt. margaritas. So much salt last night. Can. So we designed our wedding rings that day. And the coolest thing about these rings is the artist made one and then she basically cut, cut it in half. Just yeah. the same ring. Cut it in half. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about our wedding day. Okay. What did we what did we do for our wedding? Thousands so, of people? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. So we got married in Asheville, the same place that we got engaged. Well, one year later. Yeah, right? we, actually, two, it was exactly a year later. Exactly. We, we kept it really small. We, we actually kind of eloped. We didn't tell you know our family really what we were doing. Dustin brought his brother and his best friend, which I spoke about earlier, um, and also one of his, uh, his his business partner and his other best friend, and she came with her husband as well. And I brought one of my best friends from uh, from from high school, somebody I grew up with, who's near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Looking back, I kind of wish we had a bigger wedding. Yeah, I really wish we had all of our family there, but I think we have that opportunity in the future. Yeah, we'll renew our vows with all of our family and our kids. Yeah. Be so sweet. And we're trying to build a wedding venue. All right. So we're going to be the first ones to use it. Yeah. Found this wedding venue in Asheville that looked like a castle. Yeah. It's actually it's really cute. Like a miniature castle. Yeah. <laughs> we just had our best friends with us. And I think that was perfect because we were able to say our vows that were so personal and so deep. Yeah, I really can't imagine doing that in front of a, a huge group of people. Right. So basically, we were just boohooing the entire time, yeah, and true. you know, climbing our way through, <laughs> through these vows. Because as soon as you say the first word, it just you just lose it. Yeah. Um, and even to this day, we are still. Every time we watch the video, we can't get through the first sentence or two without crying. It's true. Right <laughs> So we decided to do our honeymoon in New Zealand, yeah. which was amazing. We spent nine months planning for this trip. Yeah, you know, the entire time, we, almost the entire time we were engaged, we were planning, <laughs> planning our honeymoon. We we put more thought into our honeymoon than we did our our, <laughs> our actual wedding. Both love outdoors. We both love hiking, and who doesn't love beautiful uh, scenery and mountains and and magical stuff? But we had no clue how beautiful New Zealand was, and, ex and experienced the entire North and South Island. Yeah. We spent almost an entire month in New Zealand and we drove 
literally from the North Island all the way to the South Island, which was incredible. I've never seen a place that has landscape that changes so drastically from from place to place. It was with, incredible, yeah, right? <laughs> with glaciers coming down from mountains that go into rainforests that have penguins, and you're like, what? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what, what is this? We did hiking around volcanoes, like a helicopter over to this White Island. White Island, which is an active volcano where it had these bubbling sulfuric pools. Sulfuric pools. Right. <laughs> Green pools, and we were wearing these respirator masks because you can't breathe that were. It's hard to breathe without them. And it was like, it was just Bert and I and the helicopter pilot on this entire island just walking around. And there's no, it's, there's no guardrails. He just like, <laughs> don't fall in there, you die. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And you're just like, okay. We did a, a glacial hike where yeah. we took a helicopter up to the top of the glacier and they dropped us off. Yeah, that was crazy. We, and we took a we took this boat ride through Milford Sound, which is amazing and beautiful. And if you ever, if you've ever seen these movies like Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, like where you think like, oh, that's all CGI and it, nothing in the world looks like that. And they base it off of New Zealand, right? It is. It is. I mean, I, it's crazy. Like Lord of the Rings was filmed in New Zealand and that's why, because the place is just that insane. It is so beautiful and we cannot wait to take our kids there. Yeah. So that's yeah. our journey. Yep. And now we are gonna go finish our celebration of our anniversary. Yeah. So we're gonna get off here, but thank you so much for all the love and support you guys show us. Yeah, we really appreciate it. <laughs> Have fun, bye. Bye.